sound recording action. My name is Bernard Wanjala. I'm the president of Chess Kenya. And uh, here we are hosting Africa Chess Amateur, uh, which is starting today on 26th. And it will run all the way for the next eight days up to 4th December. We have uh, 15 countries which have registered. So far, the highest number of population, and uh, of course, about 100 participants, uh, which again is a very decent number compared to the last edition. Uh, we hope we are hosting this event in the coastal part of the country, uh, which is actually the tourist destination. And we hope the participants will have, will enjoy the environment, will enjoy the tournament, and uh, at the end of the day, just will be. I want to welcome all of them to this year's uh, edition and wish for the participants.
go process our tickets because we need tickets for everyone to get in. Uh, this place is called Fort Jesus. Eh? Fort Jesus. Fort Jesus is one of the oldest places in Africa. Uh, the Portuguese, they, 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 they are people who are telling us the story of Fort Jesus. Eh? After that, we'll start a tour, but we'll do it anti-clockwise because Raphael is doing it clockwise, so like we don't clash along the way, okay? Because if we go one direction, you know, there will be no space for us to enjoy photos and etc. Okay, so let's talk, walk to the model there. Down the layout there. of the fort is like a human body on that cross, okay? So we enter through the left arm, that is the head facing C, the C. The right arm, the right leg, the left leg. Remember, it's called for Jesus because it was built by the first Christians, the Portuguese, from 11th April 1593. Why the name for Jesus? Remember, the Portuguese came here to conquer, okay? They wanted to get slaves for their sugar plantations in the Brazil and in South America. There was need for more labor supplies, labor supplies, and they would come to Africa to get that through slave trade, okay? Now, this fort, 70% of it is carved out of a massive coral stone. I was talking to that girl, where she, she's here, yeah? Yeah. I explained to her, initially, there was the sea here, because coral is alive under the sea water, okay? So it means that at some point, because of the movement of tectonic plates, the sea water level receded. You know, it moved ahead, but the coral is static, it never moved, okay? Then it died. Remember, coral is like fish. Suppose you remove fish out of water, it dies. So it's a dead coral. And I did explain to her, and I explained to you all here, that 70% of the fort was carved out of a massive coral. It's two and a half acres in size, the Fort Jesus, and they used a labor force of 4,000 workmen for a period of three years. The workmen were paid in kind. I mean, in terms of food subsidies, they were never paid any wages for the job done by the Portuguese. Remember, the Portuguese were masters. They never did the physical job. They were just instructing guys, do it, do this, do this, okay, add this, okay, reduce this. Understood, guys, eh? It was designed by a famous Italian uh, architect by the name Giao Kirato Battista. Giao Kirato Battista was already working for the Portuguese in India, Goa. Remember, the Portuguese were already in India before coming to Mombasa or East Africa or Africa. Okay, why? In the 15th century, Portugal and Spain were two world powers. Now, to avoid conflict, remember, the Roman Catholic popes had dominated world politics. So to avoid conflict between the two world powers, they had separated the world into two spheres of influence. Africa and Asia was given to the Portuguese. So naturally, they would go to India to get silk and spices, which were very important commodities. But to get to India, they would pass through the Ottoman Empire. You know, the caliphate, yeah? the caliphate, yeah? the Ottoman Empire. They were child exorbitant taxes. So uh, Henry the Navigator, who was son to King Philip I, who by then was ruling Portugal, told his dad, we aren't paying all those exorbitant taxes. We find the sea route to India. And the sea route to India involves sailing around Africa. That's how the Portuguese found Sao Tome, Verde, Guinea-Bissau, Angola, Mozambique, Mombasa, then Malindi. When he arrived in Malindi, Vasco da Gama, he took a local guide by the name Masjid, who finally brought him to India. He became a legend. Why? Previously, other explorers would not go beyond the Cape of Good Hope. You know why? The Benguela currents, the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean, they are meeting there, so there's really strong currents. Huh? That made it impossible for other explorers like Bartholomew Diaz to go beyond the Cape of Good Hope. So he did that with the Gama and he became a legend. Now back to the map. We have the Museum Gallery, which is the most recent building. It was commissioned in 1960, I told that the girl. And next to the uh, museum, we have the offices. The offices were also built in 1960 above a mass graveyard. Why above a mass graveyard? In 1960, when the museum gallery was commissioned, there was no other extra space to build the museum offices. You understand, eh? Yeah. The curator's office for, and the supporting staff, they are domiciled there. So they did what? They just collapsed the graveyard, they flattened it and built an office above it, but there were no excavations. The skeletons are still beneath. Why? The reasoning was any excavation would have been like disturbing the spirits of the dead. The reasoning was let the dead rest in peace. Okay, we'll pass by that. We'll pass by the gate. We are not allowed to go in. It's not for visitors, it's for the staff. Okay, or if you have any specific inquiries, then you can go. But we're not doing that. We'll just pass by the 
get there, there are some writings on the wall. I would like you to personally read to compliment what I said so far. Okay. Now, I did say, and I say again, those cannon guns were not there initially. They were just put there for display. They were not there initially because you could argue correctly that they are targeting their wall. Isn't it so? Because their wall is there. They were, ne they were not there initially. They were brought there for a decoration purpose to make the site interesting. People like things when they are nicely arranged. They would take photos to remember their visit. Isn't it so? I already saw you guys sitting on them, taking pictures. Yeah. So they are serving that purpose. The actual position for the cannon gun should be on the wall, targeting enemies from outside. They are used for the defense of this fact. Actually, we have uh, the Portuguese cannons, those ones there, and then in front of the museum gallery, we have the British cannons. Now, chronology of events. The fort was founded by the Portuguese on 11th April 1593. March 1696, Omani Arabs arrived here at the invitation of the Sheikh of Mombasa. A Sheikh is like a president, a sultan, or a ruler, emperor, etc. Okay. So when the Portuguese were here, they were like harvesting from his garden. He was offended, but he was weaker uh, militarily. So he seeked military aid from his friend, Sultan Sheikh Ali Arub of Oman. Ali Arubi sent a naval ship to come and attack this fort. Upon arrival, they could not collapse this wall. I did say 30%, that upper wall, that is what was built, okay? is over, wall, over one meter thick. We'll walk to that wall and you'll see the width is wide, eh? over one meter. And is out of coral. Remember, coral stone undergoes a process of oxidation, just like with metal stone. It was that hard, Arabs could not collapse Copycat. it. So they employed a strategy of starvation, of a blockade. The fort was surrounded. After two years, nine months, all the Portuguese were trapped here and died of starvation. The last Portuguese soldier decided to take his own life. And in the process, he also ensured he destroyed what was of value. I mean, the gunpowder was stored up there. He said, I'm going to die. I take my own life. Enemy don't take it, so they don't get that credit. And in the process also, I destroy what is of value. If they come in, they got nothing of value. That was strategic and that was intelligent or sly. I would call it sly. Yeah, he did that. So when Arabs later took over, they restored the gunpowder magazine. That's why it resembles the roof of a mosque. It's look at up there, right? So that would be our first stop. Eh? We're going to go in there. There's some writings I would like you to read again to add on to what I said. After that, we're going to have the anti-clockwise tour. So, sir, we'll be here for the next 30, 40 minutes. Or in the course of the visit, any relevant questions, please eh? feel free. Okay. Okay, let's Excuse move. Me. Yes, please. Uh, I can see stairs, but there's a wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is covered. There is a wall. It's blocked. You can't go in through unless you go through the gate. Eh? This is the offices. And initially, it was a bar. It was a burial ground, a mass graveyard. Okay. So there's the stairs. We'll walk physically there, and you can peep in and see. Yeah. The okay. The stairs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Andiamo. On y va. All the space downstairs is for chess group. Let us occupy to balance the down. We are delighted to have all of you here this evening. Would like to let you know that your safety is our priority. The men in blue that you see are well trained for your safety. Just in case of anything, the men in blue will guide you on how we are going to have the life jackets which are underneath your seats. On board, we also have the service team and the kitchen team that are going to make sure that you are well catered for in terms, of, in terms of food and beverage. We also have our abled differently burnt Ian and B. Aisha, the duo bands, who are going to keep us entertained throughout the cruise. This is going to be a three and a half to four hours cruise. And according to the tides, we might be able to see the Fort Jesus. If the tides do not favor us, we might not be able to see the Fort Jesus. We shall cruise along the Tudor Creek. 
and then we'll reach a place near the near the Chuda water spots and anchor as we serve the food. Excuse me. Good evening once more. Hello. Jambo. Jambo. How are you today? I hope you are enjoying the dao as uh, we've served you, yeah? Now that is uh, the tamarind signature cocktail, yeah? If in case you have any problem, then that's the solution to, to it. So kindly take lots of dao with us. My name is Victor. I'm the one in charge for the tamarind dao. Karibuni sana. It's a pleasure to host you. Just been informed, we are hosting the chess group. I'd like to mention the chess federation president, Mr. Bernard Wanjala. It's a pleasure to host one of the best chess people on the Tamarind Dow tonight. We're looking forward to create magical moments with you. At least uh, today, I think I'll have some few lessons about the chess game. Eh? I love to see you later on. Yeah. Others, uh, we also welcome you on board. It's a pleasure to host you as well. It's a family, people from Uganda, Tanzania. So all welcome to the Tamarind Dow. Please feel at home. In case you need any assistance, please don't hesitate. Kindly let us know on how we can be able to assist you. Welcome on board. Karibu <laughs> Good one. Everything here.
How are you? How are you? Yeah. Are you winning that category? No, I'm winning. Huh? You did a good job, eh? Thank you. I love what you Lisa will go over there to go get the apple. What's the name of the song, man? I hope you enjoyed, eh? Yeah, I enjoyed. Why are you looking down? Hi. Hey. Hey. How was your experience? It was very nice. Did I you enjoy the dance? I did their music. We had good vocals. Oh. Wow. <laughs> All protocol observed. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, it gives me a lot of joy uh, this evening as we come to the conclusion of one of the toughest events this year. It has been uh, tough for us as organizers. But I thank God because I have had a lot of fun working with uh, all of you. And more importantly, making sure that you are comfortable and you are enjoying the hospitality of Kenya. And I hope at your own level, you enjoy staying in Kenya and Mombasa at large. Before I say much, I want to welcome uh, the president of Seychelles. Just to make one or two remarks, we have been also one of the toughest opponents. Uh, just come as a person so they can make at least a remark. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, on my side, it's not much of a remark, it's more again a uh, congratulation for the whole uh, Kenya just executive committee for organizing uh, this player, uh, um, this event. And all of us see players, parents uh, who came to participate um, uh, throughout the whole tournament or whatever, you know, like I understand some had to go for exams. But either way, uh, for coming, your presence. Uh, is well appreciated. So again, can we give a big hands of applause for all of us for coming this event? Thank you. And best wishes uh, for future events. No promises on my side if I do another event like this, but uh, I'm inspired. I can say that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are really, really privileged to have you uh, as one of the participants and also leading your federation to participate in this event. When you host one, as Kenyans, we will also return and come to Zimbabwe. <laughs> we have our representative from Namibia. Representative from Somalia.
Secondly, I want also to recognize the supporters of this event. Um, we have uh, Mombasa Cement who came through. They have been with, uh, they were able to, uh, to chip in. Uh, we also want to recognize the corporates who sponsor their team to participate in this event. We have Equity Bank. You can just raise your and we have also CPA, NCPA, oh, sorry, NCPA are also a new kid on the block. These are who we do in Interbank. So when they are here, they are here representing Interbank teams that also showcase their strong skills during Interbank teams. We normally don't raise the national league, the, the interbank games, because we don't have enough players. But we have about four players who have had the first rating from the interbank. What became a coach? Yeah. Mine is just to wish you all the best as you travel back. We welcome you again. Uh, we hope you will be We are happy to raise to support us. The bid is open. We are yet to, to decide whether to go for 2023 or 2024. But our target is to have that. Then we go for other bigger things. And when we do this, we are opening the opportunity for Africa. We are opening the opportunity for Kenyans and all other Africans to benefit from the experience of the world's uh, best player. So we are appealing to uh, those who can work with us to ensure that this dream comes true uh, um, in the next one or two years. For us, we are up to task. Um, we will use the experience that we have learned from this event to ensure that we give the best to the world. Remember, Africa has not was, uh, hosted a, a wild event since we had Africa Youth in South Africa. And Kenya, Kenya is going to make it happen. We are going to make it happen. We hold it here. And at least showcase that Africa has also the capacity to host the world event. We are also challenging the NCC. We need a wild Olympia in Africa. We need it. And that can only happen if we have the most certain capacity. So if you are a player, you need also to look for other sets of skills that can be useful to contribute to this dream. And one of the ways you can do it, when we advertise for organizers um, courses, apply. So that when we are applying for this event, we have enough capacity as Africa to drive that event. When you are, we also support the youngsters who are coming up. And for that matter, I want to recognize Madam for bringing these youngsters. Just stand up so that people can see you. If there is something that comes to me with having these youngsters for this country, I'm sure they didn't come here to win. But there is something they have won, the experience, the interaction, the encouragement that they can do it. How many of us are we uh, are doing that at our personal level? Thank you very much, Madam, for the sacrifice. It cost a lot of resources, but the lessons that these kids have learned is going to help. And I want to see you next in the next tournament to to see how you are doing. Yeah? 
when you are meeting these big people, you when you go to your categories, you shouldn't be able to win, isn't it? Yeah, all the best. Otherwise, uh, I don't have much to say, just to uh, it was a very huge privilege to host you as you go back past our regards. As we finish, I want to uh, first of all um, mention a few people who make who made this event a success. Um, we have a small organizing committee that uh, we have been working on. Um, Mukabe is here. <laughs> we have been the man behind all the communications. I know if you got an email, it was coming for, uh, from him, so you can connect the face and the email. If he was uh, polite or he was hard, that's how he is. Okay? We have Mama Chess. Uh, she was in charge of your welfare, and she, I think she has done well. Yeah, but if she, if you didn't go very well, uh, that's how she is. Okay. Just ensure that everyone is comfortable. To, uh, and in the end, we have Morel who was in charge of logistics. Morel? Where is Morel? Outside. Yes, he was in charge of logistics. We also have uh, Paul Omboy. Paul Omboy, he was in charge of logistics uh, for this event. If, you, if there was a delay to be picked in the airport, that's the man to look for. <laughs> and I think he did well. Yes. Yeah. Then we had also uh, uh, arbitration, the guy who has been king in the name. If your name is misspelled, uh, we have Moses Minor. <laughs> <laughs> I know the, the chief actor will introduce his team during the presentation of the result, but that's the thing that uh, we have worked very closely. Now, when you see these tables arranged and equipment set up, we have one man behind called Moses and you. Just wave to them. <laughs> he is the head of events, and we have done very, very well uh, to ensure that this event takes off. It's important to recognize them. Uh, the chief actor of the event, uh, Mr. Kilton, will introduce later the actors because they also played a very critical area. Um, in Kenya, we call them IEPC, the body in charge of elections. <laughs> so we have been waiting for results since, more, since uh, one. <laughs> then he said, I will not release the result until I announce who is the winner. So, for Kenya, they understand IEPC. <laughs> yeah, but we, we respect your, your role. I want first to take the message to, to uh, Madam President, who could not make to be here. She really wished to be here. She is called Madam Sepiso Lopan from Botswana, the President of Africa Chess Confederation. She asked me to, to convey her apology. And I'm sure her treasurer is here, so she it will do it better to pass the message. But I want also to, to ask you to take the message that we are very grateful that she gave us an opportunity to host this event. When, we, when uh, you have any other event, please consider Kenya. You are only in Mombasa. We were in Kisumu, so we can take you to another town. <laughs> Kenya is very big and uh, have a lot of facilities. Um, so when you have another event, consider Kenya, we are ready to host any time. Otherwise, allow me to um, take this opportunity to welcome um, the treasurer of SEC, Mr. Winfred, who are on behalf of SEC, 
as we finish. Kari Pusat. Sana, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President of the Kenya Chess Federation, Mr. President of the Seychelles Chess Federation, ladies and gentlemen, head of delegations, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, this event is successful, so everything went well. Um, I was the eye of ACC in this event. I was a player also, but uh, I was also an arbiter. I can assure you that all, all the federals were observed. So the tournament went well, and uh, I would say, uh, I'd like to say congratulations to all winners, and say that there are, uh, somebody in India said that there are no losers. There are winners and future future winners. I'm sure that uh, each of you who are here, thank you. In the number of ACC, of course, because I know that you helped also uh, a lot of the Kenyan Chess Federation. So, um, regarding of hosting world events in Africa, such as the World Amateur, and why not uh, the World Collegiate, I know it's not easy, but if you can dream it, you can do it. That's what you want. So, we will support uh, each initiative in the interest of the whole Africa. According to our, our means. Our means. But, uh, um, it's our duty. It's our duty to other sponsors as we as, we, as possible because uh, FIDE, FIDE itself uh, it uses a lot of sponsors and uh, uh, the amount allocated for organizing an Olympia is very small. You can't put an Olympia to start the, the money of FIDE or ACC, it's not possible. So we have to gather sponsors from the whole Africa. But we can't say that it's for we've been that year or three years. We're not sure. But for what the matter, why not? But the, uh, I'm able with the awards I've seen in Kenya. We were very positive. I uh, enjoyed everything. Yeah. We enjoyed the, the accommodation, the, the tour, the play, the administration. So everything went well. And uh, for all participants, all participants I'd like to wish you a safe return at home. And uh, once again, I uh, thank everybody for being here. And uh, for the head of delegation who are here, if you have any feedback from Kenya of what would have been, what would, would have gone well, better. So we are all here. We could communicate to ACC what can be done to make a future continental event to be even better. So, thanks everybody. To watch for him, uh, there are no losers, but you're all winners. Here, Tanzania, Uganda, South Sudan, Somalia, Sudan, oh, the list is in Zimbabwe, Uganda, and uh, to be honest, that's a good plan from different parts of Africa. Uh, to carry us on, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Chief Abuta. Uh, Chief Abuta will maybe give us one or two remarks.
how they conducted the whole event, and also maybe introduce his, his team. Because, you know, uh, behind every successful man, there's a, <laughs> it's a group of team <laughs> behind him. <laughs> uh, let's give let's him a more welcome. Number three from Kenya with six points.
Elizabeth Maina. Six points. And Ladies, 
23 men in the last section. Uh, number one, number two, up number three. Those are the ones we are entitled to get prizes. But the after both city, the prizes go up to the position number six because they are tied. Number three up to number six, they all have got six points. So for that reason, number six also will get the first prize. So I'll start announcing number six with six points from Kenya, CM Magana Bay.
Dr. Wall entdeckt hat, Herr Oponenski ist dort mit ihr. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And uh, and that two thousand, yeah? Maybe. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
uh, just a reminder that uh, the top three, one up number three, if you don't have a title, you would like to apply for a condition title. It's called a condition title because until you reach a for the title that they were disadvantaged, yeah? And uh, just one of two things to clarify what uh, Bernasiva is saying. You guys who have won those uh, categories, you have the right for the next event, for the next Africa Amateur Individual Championship. You have the right to participate as winners in those categories. Okay? And uh, I would like now to call back to Bona Chairman uh, to give us some few announcements. Bona Chair, let's go for Bona Chair. Ever since Bona Chair became president, you have been meeting us. Do you know that? <laughs> yeah, people from other countries, do you know that? Yeah, so let's give, let's give him a clap. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is thank you very much. And I want to thank everyone who has been with us. Uh, this evening. Mine is very simple. I know we have some who are traveling. I want to just make a couple of announcements. The first one is uh, for Kenyans, our national championship will be starting on 26th December, so you can prepare. The second one is uh, uh, we are inviting you for dinner on the other side of the lake. Um, those who can dance and have fun, we have a life band there for you and means for everyone, including those who are staying outside. You are asked to join us uh, and as we travel back, we want you to pass our greetings to everyone who didn't make it to be with us. Um, in case you are pressed, for us we are paying price fund cash, but we had a problem with change. So in case you have a shortage, uh, you will see Rhoda or Mukabe uh, to have a balance of, uh, of what is missing. Lastly, if you have not received a certificate, ensure you get one. Everyone will receive a certificate of participation uh, from this event. Otherwise, thank you very much as we try to pass, pass our cards. Uh, thank you, Bonatia. We are almost finishing. Uh, just two clarification. Uh, you said that there are some there was a point where they were using the whole system uh, and they had to divide the cash. So you might find in an envelope that they don't add up. So they're saying without the don't add up, you see Mama Chase, uh, the lady working, and as uh, able Secretary General, Mr. Nkadi. Okay? Uh, now to finish up, uh, I would like to call Mama Chess <laughs> to give all your friends. Mama Chess. Good evening. Good evening at the back there. Good evening. Oh, we feeling? Very excited. Excited? Yes. From Sudan, are we feeling? From Sudan, are we feeling? I'm sure that you are ready. How are you feeling?
Thank you so much, uh, Wilfred. Thank you for the journey that you've made. Thank you for the, your representation, representation from ACC. To the arbiters, thank you so much. It was really hard making decisions at times, but uh, I really thank you guys for the uh, for burning the oil at night to make decisions. It was not easy, but thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Paul and uh, Morel for coordinating the logistics. I know there are some people who are supposed to travel right now, and there's a vehicle waiting for them, so I don't want to take too long. I just want to say thank you so, so much. And for those who are traveling today, have a safe flight. For those who are traveling tomorrow, have a safe flight. I'm hoping and wishing that we'll meet in another event. Thank you so much. Now, uh, do you want to be told either if you are residing here or you are not residing here, there is a park with outside there along, along the pool, yeah? Yeah. So, by the half, we go to the Up. Hello? Uh, let me translate that in English, yeah? I was told I was with my Swahili friends here from Tanzania and Uganda. We are saying there is a park with uh, uh, after this meeting, we all moved to the school side. We have prepared some small uh, meals for everyone. And it doesn't matter either if you are residing here at the hotel or not. Okay? Just something to bring us together to share one meal before we say our good price. So you are free to give at your own pleasure. Thank you.